In this video, we will learn how to integrate a one variable function using Gaussian quadrature. The limit for this such integral is from minus one to one. Limit of your actual integral might not be minus one and one, but you can change any limit that you have into minus one and one using linear transformation. The concept of Jacobian is crucial during this transformation. In a separate video in the link, you can know a little more about Jacobians. Although we take this extra step of converting or transforming your limit into this uh, minus one and one, it has great advantage of performing the integral significantly faster using Gaussian quadrature. Another video link in the description discusses such advantages. We start with a very simple function, fx is equal to x. We can perform this definite integral using calculus. And this is the integral. And once we put the limit, the integral becomes zero. We can get some intuition from the plot of this function. Integral of this function between minus one and one would mean the area under this curve between zero and one plus the area under this curve between zero and minus one. If we look closely, the area under this curve here is equal to the area under this curve here, but they have opposite signs. So as a result, they cancel each other and we have the final integral value to be zero. Also important to notice when the power of such function is odd, for example, it's one here, then the area cancels each other. Similarly, for this function, the power is odd. So by just looking at this curve and without doing the integration, we know that this integral will be zero. Now, if we take this function, which has the power even, then the plot of this function shows that uh, the area does not cancel each other. So the first remark is this definite integral is going to be non-zero. That means we have to integrate to know what's the value of this definite integral. Let's integrate. So first it's integrated here then the limits are put in and we get the integral to be 14 by 3. So this integration is performed by using classical calculus. Whereas the Gauss quadrature suggests if you want to integrate this function within this limit, you don't need to use the conventional calculus. Instead, you focus in these two quantities. In the number line, these two points plus minus would be these and this and we also have this quantity weight which is one so instead of integration we will evaluate this function at this point and then multiply that with the weight and then add with that this function evaluated at that point and again multiplied with the weight according to gaussian quadrature these two weights are one so that means we have to evaluate this function at this point and at this point and add them together. And uh, it says that by doing that, we will find the value of this integral and it is 14 by three, as we have seen earlier. Evaluating this function at minus one by root three would mean that we put in place of x minus one by root three squared squared and plus two. So here goes the first part. And for the second part, we do the same thing. Instead of x square, we put one by root over three square and plus two. And when we add them up, we indeed get the value 14 by three. Just notice that by doing that, we avoid doing the actual integral. We basically found what these functions values are at these two special points and then add them together. These are the three functions that we have taken to get the Gauss integration. By using these two points at minus one by root over three and plus one by root over three, we can integrate polynomials up to the power of three. We can also use more than two points. For example, if you select three points, then you have to evaluate the function at three different points, zero, plus root over three by five and minus root over three by five. And also you have to multiply whatever you get used by evaluating the function with this value with certain weights. And similarly, you can do for four points and five points. 
whichever you choose the procedure is same as we have shown in this example if you have a fifth order polynomial then 5 plus 1 6 divided by 2 that means 3 so you will need 3 gauss point to successfully integrate uh, your function but if your highest power of the polynomial is for example 8 then 8 plus 1 is 9 divided by 2 4.5 you have to take the next uh, full number which is 5 so that means with a polynomial with highest power of 8 you will need 5 gauss point to integrate that particular polynomial function if we consider integrating this function as the highest power is 3 only two points as we have seen earlier plus root over 1 by 3 and minus 1 by root over 3 is enough so to get this integration we can simply evaluate this function at root over 1 by 3 and as the weight is 1 just ignore it plus evaluate this function at minus root over 1 by 3 and add them together and by doing that you will have the value for this definite integral without ever doing the integration now instead of one variable in one dimension if you have two variables and then you have two dimensions then you have to make this sort of grid of gauss points as you have two variables now each gauss point has two coordinate values notice that how these coordinates are again a combination of minus 1 by root 3 and plus 1 by root 3 as this point is 0 0 in this two dimensional space then the first gauss point is you go uh, 1 by root 3 plus horizontally and plus 1 by root 3 vertically and the other one is you go minus 1 by root 3 horizontally and vertically plus 1 by root 3 similarly minus uh, 1 by root 3 horizontally and vertically also minus 1 by root 3 and same way you also get these points so we have four gauss points with two coordinates to be put in this equation for integration so what we are going to do we will for x we will put this value and for y we will put this value and evaluate this particular function we will do the same for this gauss point this gauss point and this gauss point and add everything together and by doing that we will get the integral of this function within this limit without doing the integration it's similar as we did with one variable so again this is the procedure and the weight function for two point integration uh, it's all, although it's four point at a particular line there are two points so we can consider the weight for a two point gauss integration so these weights all of them are one and then we put this gauss points value of x and y into this function and add them together and by doing that we have this integral without ever doing the integration which means this value would be the volume under this surface see the other video in the description where we have performed this integration